Olivia Wayne and this is The Sheer Luck Show. Coming up on today's show is Laura Black's Autumn Essentials, some home inspo, a great interview and a vlog from SL's new editor and lots more. Firstly, welcome to today's panel, Heather, Georgina and Laura. How is everyone? Good to see you. It's been a minute, I think. Yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, how are you doing? Don't You're looking it. resplendent. Uh, so much, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> no, how are you all? Good? Yeah, good, good. The reason I ask is, it's a big week. It is International Mental Health Awareness Week, um, a really important week. We've got lots on the site, um, good websites to see, good apps to use, good support, because it's a really big topic, and quite rightly so, we're discussing it a lot more nowadays. Heather, let's start with you. Mental health, it affects all of us. What are the things you do for yourself to boost yourself if and when you get yourself or you find yourself in a little slump? It's a tricky one, isn't it? Because everyone's got, it can sort of hit you at different moments and things. I think definitely, it sounds so obvious, but making sure you're getting enough sleep, I think definitely helps wonders. Sometimes I take CBD before going to bed and I feel like that can kind of get you in a good place to hopefully nod off easier than you might do otherwise. So you feel a bit more refreshed the next day. But also something I've been doing recently that not just for mental health reasons, but I've just think it's probably good for that and is good in general is fluid form Pilates which we've spoken about yeah. before so I've got like a three-month subscription and yeah it's this Australian woman who sort of does all these videos but they do like challenges every few months so at the moment I'm sort of a week and a bit into a 21 day challenge where it's only 20 minutes a day That's with so these good. different videos but it doesn't sound like much but I already feel like no, much it's... stronger and better and my shoulders and feel it helps a bit you more relaxed as well doesn't it exactly it's breathing. Mm. and also um I personally do use exercise as my meditation yeah. like I find it very hard to sit there and meditate but I kind of think meditation and movement whatever yeah, that may completely. be so that would be a perfect way and 20 minutes is enough yeah. to tip all your kind of endorphins into the right space exactly Georgina what about you well I'm nodding along because <laughs> like, yes. I was yeah. really, really like exhausted I had quite a full-on weekend and I left the office I got home and I did a evening yoga class and then I had a big bowl of pasta and I was in bed at 10 to 9. Oh, oh and okay. lying in bed watching Jamie Oliver cooking roast pork and I was like this is great I feel really Relax, this is what I needed all day. Yeah. Um, and then I take a sleep tonic, which is basically valerium, and it's a brand called... <laughs> Valium. No, 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 no that one, the other one. Yeah. Um, Artar, or uh, I don't know how you say it, A-R-T-A-H. Oh, yes, Paul um, talks about that. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm on a kind of, I've got like six jars by my bed, but the, the one I swear by is the sleep tonic. Because if you are feeling anxious, I think it's when you're lying still in your bed at the end of the day that your mind, mm. oh, you just start yeah. overthinking... And it can be quite overwhelming. And I think that's a really nice time to just hit, knock yourself up with yeah. some of that. Um, and then in the morning, I take their enhanced nootropics, which is pump full of all the B vitamins. I think one of them is like 3,000% of recommended daily allowance. Or something. Get it in. <laughs> and then it's got the um, ashwagandha in it as well, which is very important. Very I important. Really Magnesium. Mm. It is, it's honestly, it's, it's one of those things. There was one month where I hadn't replenished my supply and I kind of, felt, I think, just a little bit more on edge. And it wasn't until I'd been taking it, stopped taking it, that then I realized, oh, it is doing something. And then... Now Someone once said to me again. something very important, because a lot of people take supplements and think, oh, is it doing anything? I don't feel any different. And it's like, well, why don't you see how you feel when you're not taking them? Yeah. yeah. But also... Um, even if it's a placebo effect, sometimes you feel like you're taking your like resources to yeah. boost you. That's not a bad thing, but they do do things. So like they are very important. What about you, Laura? Well, I'm quite skeptical of a supplement. See? I know, I know. I do. You're just I, not taking the right one. I, I, that's obviously it. But I really use my breath. So somebody once told me to smell the roses and blow out the candles. Mm. And it's like, oh, it. I, I so use nice. it all the time. So if I'm ever feeling myself getting too anxious, I always like, smell them and then blow out, blow out the candles. I love it. breathing. Mm. Just mm. calm it's it so right calming. down. I love that. Well done. And mine is just get into nature if you can. Yeah, Literally, yeah. as soon as you look up and look at trees mm. that have weathered storms for hundreds of years, you're going to be okay. And that's it. And like feel your feet on the ground. ground. It's yeah. true. There's scientific research that does support grounding. It's real. It's not hippy dippy. So get your toes in the grass. All right, thank you all. Next up is a bit of fashion content from Laura. Here are her essential buys for autumn. Hi, I'm Laura Black. I'm founding managing editor at Sherlock's. And today we're going to talk through some of my new autumn winter essentials. <music> 
So first up is this mega boucle cardigan slash jacket from Massimo Dutti. This is new in. You had to go on a waiting list and it finally came in and I purchased like that. It's super cozy. I think works really nicely with blue denim. I've sort of elevated the look for now with some heels and some big chunky gold jewelry, but I think it would work equally well with just a plain simple white tee and some trainers for daytime too. Next up on continuing on the boucle vibe is this pretty incredible statement knit by Isabel Moron. It's got a really nice fitted shape at the waist and these lovely exaggerated shoulders. It's an investment, but I don't think these shoulders are going anywhere, so worth the price tag. You can wear it with denim, leather, I think works really well with the skirt, some culottes. I just think it's gonna work really hard in your wardrobe. Now we have this Reese long wrap coat. As it's a slightly softer camel, I think it works really well layered with creams. It's got a lovely tie wrap, which you can do for a slightly slimmer silhouette. But again, I think works really well in the daytime, but really nice over a leather skirt or something for evening. It's just really soft and cozy. I have quite a bit of leather in my wardrobe. It's something that I've tried to invest in over the years. And I love this modern take on the look this year, which is these wide leg culottes from Nanushka. I've teamed them with some long boots and a big chunky roll neck, which I've worn to the office, but equally with some strappy heels, something a little bit more sheer on top and some big statement earrings. And I just think they're a great addition to my wardrobe, something I'll come back to again and again. And finally, are these. It's a slightly more tailored take on a split hem legging. Split hems don't seem to be going anywhere. They're coming back year after year. And I find them quite a good shape for somebody who's a little bit more petite. And I find the little bit of skin showing at the bottom of my ankle a bit more flattering. These as well are a little bit more forgiving than a legging. So that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed that. All products will be linked in the show notes below and I'll see you soon. I loved that, especially that Isabel jumper. That oh, was good, really, and you look fabulous oh, in those clothes. Very kind. So there are lots and lots of mega brands, obviously. Um, first of all, guys, I want to know what bits you loved of Laura's edits, like which pieces did you have your eye on? And then I want to know where your go-to kind of more secret high street offerings come from. Hit me, Heather. Uh, the Reese coat for me. Yes. I think I can't wear that colour. So when I see it on anyone else, I'm like, oh, it's such a nice, like, it just looks so pulled you know, together. I can't wear it next to my skin either. Oh, I have to put great. like some white or, or denim. Oh, it looked really in between. great. That's interesting to break mm. it up. To break it That's up. a good style tip. Mm. Thanks, Maybe Laura. I need to do that instead. Yeah. Wait, and Georgina, which bit did you love? Um, or these, what, well, the piece. split hem trousers from Reese. Which I think they do as petite. They do. That's so lucky. if you're yeah. short like me, yeah, like, you, can't, are you? you can't buy a split hem and hem them up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a um, I'm 5'4 on a yeah. good day. Yeah. I'm standing up really <laughs> upright. Okay, so you fall into petite categories. For clothing, well, they say 5'3 and under, but my experience is you can you can go, go petite if you're 5'4. Okay, now tell me your secret high street um, well, finds. I mean, the ones that are a bit off the beaten track. Because we all know the biggies. I'm not even going to mention them. They get enough airtime. What are the ones you love, Laura? I think this is just such a great part of our job is that we can spend time as work looking through all these oh, sites. the dream job. I know. <laughs> um, and actually recently I found some really good pieces on Warehouse and Oasis. Yeah? Yeah, so good. I... But I think, as you say, they're not like the key ones that necessarily everybody is going to. My favourite so. suit, black oversized baggy trousers, you know, mm. warehouse. Yeah. And amazing. I bought the Cos black trousers, prefer the warehouse one. Yeah. Really amazing. And Such they're really value. good um, party stuff as well. So it's yes. a really good time of year to look. Absolutely. Uh, Georgina. Um, so for me, for bikinis in the summer, I just think sometimes like, it is really nice to have a designer bikini, obviously, but actually they always get ruined anyway. So they last like one season really. Um, Oisho. Which yeah, is so online. Good, their, so good. their bikinis, the cuts, the fabrics, they're brilliant. And actually, the ones I have have lasted me two or three years. And they also do really good caftans, like really beautiful and linen, linen and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and a good price. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you can work mix out match here. the sizes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. For the bikinis. Love that. Which is 
Too and sharp. I bought one this season, uh, two actually, <laughs> this season, mm, bikinis. But you can have whatever the print or the style, but like that type of triangle top or an underwire top yeah. or a padded, like whatever you yeah. want, you can mix and match to still get the color and the material that you like. Oh, that's yeah. Excellent. Excellent. You, yeah, it's really good. good. So yeah. once you know your size, you can just, yeah. I would say River Island. I'm doing lots of stuff with them at the moment. And every time I see the product, I'm like, oh, it's actually very good. Yeah, do you know, yeah, I bought a great. jumpsuit last summer from there and I have worn it so yeah. much and it's so much better. Sometimes than it I think online. some brands, the styling or the, the way it is uh, marketed online, you might think that's not for me. But actually, try it if you are looking for, say, like a good. Um, imitation leather trouser. They've got amazing yeah. ones. Or those quilt coats. Pip in our office walked in the other day and such an amazing quilt coat. It's River Island. Yeah, so just like try it on because you will be, you know, really impressed, I think. Heather, where are you shopping that we don't need to know about? Um, it's mainly online, but I guess it still falls into the category. But I really rate weekday, especially yes. for knits as well. I feel like they've and got... And denim. Denim. Yeah. I, I don't really wear denim. that much denim mm -hmm. myself, but yeah, they're very mm -hmm. good for that. They've got a huge range. But no, yeah, knits, I'd say for there, they're sort of really really nice ones that are around the 40 50 pound mark yeah. so yeah not too expensive but they're like still good quality they're really good because if there's a shape you like in their denim there they kind of do it in every color and it's a little they? bit like that with it's the not, knits yeah, as well so good. yeah so do they have standalone stores as well as online i don't know oh. i don't i do most of my shopping online, online. okay so because say. the problem with denim is sometimes you always want to go and try your size yeah, of course, it's so hard yeah. but then once you know it clear You're up sorted Ah, oh, good one, guys. Thanks. We'll add to basket shortly. Now, guys, I hope you're excited about this next thing. We love interiors at Sheer Lux, and today is a goodie. I don't know about you, but I do tend to find bathrooms quite hard, but the very stylish homeware designer, Alice Palmer, doesn't seem to. From her color choices to the accessories she loves, here's how she curated the perfect space. Hi, I'm Alice Palmer, I'm a homeware designer, and welcome to my bathroom. So this is my kids' bathroom, it's quite a small space, so I wanted to make it really colourful and fun. Um, I've done wood panelling around the walls, which was just really practical for the children. It's the Farrow and Bull breakfast room green on the panelling. I designed my base and surround actually with my builder. I wanted to do a, a cement surface because I wanted to bring some sort of natural rustic elements into the bathroom. Um, I wanted the overall finish of the bathroom to be quite traditional, so I've gone with Lefroy Brook for my hardware. So the main thing I sell is my lampshades, and I've chosen the softer, scrunchy style lampshades for this bathroom. I've got the cream scallop one as the pendant, and the two wall lights, I've got the scrunchy lemon embroidered um, lamps just to sort of soften the bathroom and make it look really pretty. The pictures here I also found, they were just posters that I found in the market, and I got them framed. The finishing touch in all my bathrooms is products from Cowshed. I really love that they use natural essential oils and they just smell really delicious. So this is my ensuite bathroom. We managed to squeeze a bathroom in the loft whilst doing the loft conversion. Um, and the bath actually sits really nicely under the eaves of the roof. Um, and I've managed to extend the surround of the bathroom so there's loads of space. I chose marble tiles in this bathroom because I wanted to keep traditional. And I've also used the green Verditaire, which is a really um, sort of calming green, but also warm on the walls for the paint. Um, and I have done a, a sort of off-white lime wash to give a subtle texture on the roof, again, to keep it really warm and cosy in the loft. I wanted to add a, something with a little bit more um, pattern and texture. So I've actually handmade these splatterware tiles um, in a pottery class that I do once a week. I was given these pictures from my parents who were given them as a wedding present. I love having lots of artwork on the wall. I think it adds um, warmth and the gold sort of breaks up. It adds a little bit of interest to this corner. I love to have a cow shed candle burning in my bathroom. The poo stool was a gift from my sister, which is a great doorstop. Um, the marble Carrera tiles were from Mandarin Stone. I've done the same basin surround as I did downstairs, which is the poured con concrete that I designed with my builder, um, which again brings the sort of rustic and sort of earthy element to the bathroom. I've chosen the softer, scrunchy style lampshades for this bathroom, I've just to sort of soften the bathroom and make it look really pretty. I love to relax up here. There's nothing I like more than having a bath with bath oil, and the cowshed oil of hemp and sweet orange is just the most relaxing. 
Um, and I've obviously got loads of hand lotions and body lotions too. Thank you so much for coming to see my bathrooms. I hope I've given you some bathroom inspiration. Welcome back. Thanks, Alice. Loved that. Right, speaking of beauty products, it is such amazing news that Sephora is coming back to the UK. It's really exciting. That was my first stop whenever I go abroad, especially to the States. I used to love getting all those kind of lovely things you don't get here. So it's exciting that we're going to have bricks and mortar down the line again on our shores. Laura, I'm looking at you and you look excited too. Tell me, what is your... Tell me some good like American brands. So I feel like that's what they do very well that we obviously don't have as much access to. You're you know looking forward to I actually haven't been to America that many times, but I am going in December and I am really excited because I feel like everybody in our office is always going to and from America. Um, and coming back with beauty and bits coming from back with, like, all these goodies. I know. Um, so I'm really excited uh, because I discovered Milk Beauty a couple of years ago, which you can get online here. But I'm so excited to go into a store and they do these amazing kind of multi-purpose sticks They're that are really small enough to chuck in your handbag. It's amazing. So I hope there's somewhere I can go and actually like try them all out. Absolutely. Um, Georgina, what do, what are any good American brands you like? Or? Not really. No, no, no. no. I knew that was coming. Yeah, French for me. And so really? I think because I've always traveled more to France than any other country. And um, yeah, there's Sephora there. Yeah. So I'm going there. Once a year, but now fixed. exciting that it will be here, so yeah. at least you don't have to travel online to start with. Yeah, yeah. But it's still coming next year, I think. Yeah, that it's to me. The, sorry, no, just no. like the ex exclusives that they do, those kind of little sets and things. Yeah. So I think obviously if you can go in and then get presents and things like that, because I'm sure they'll have like special Christmas editions of things. Absolutely, oh my God, what yeah. fun! I yeah. went, I went to um, university in America, to UCLA, and we used to always go to Sephora with those little baskets, yeah. and you'd go around like just chucking everything in because it looked cheap as chips. It's in dollars, and then you get to tell you like, wow. <laughs> or you would do. Yeah, you're like, okay, don't win the other one. But there are, but also just trying it all. And Sephora's own brand of lipstick. That's and what I was going to say. Their li own lipsticks, yes. like they're so they're about eleven pounds, and they're as good as any sort of high end 100%. ones, and last for ages. So that's a good tip. Any that's brands that you recommend American brands that we should look It's up. tricky because I guess you can get some things over here now, but the brands I discovered when I've been out there because me and my friends were obsessed with Sephora. Like when the news broke last week, we were like. All on the WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah, like stupidly excited. And whenever <laughs> we go on holiday together, we always sniff one out. Even See? when we were in Bologna a few weeks ago, we were like, found them somewhere. <laughs> um, at the moment, I'm excited because I've got some uh, Dr. Jart um, BB cream that I bought when I was in Seattle in the summer. And it's about to run out and you can't get it over here. So I'm like, right, they can bring that over yeah, here. Yeah, definitely. It's excellent. And then also Replica, which you can get here now, um, that Maison Margiela um, perfume brand. I found that in... Las Vegas four and a bit years ago this beach walk one before oh, yeah. I'd heard of it anywhere else bought it when I was there and now you can get it everywhere which is good so I think yes there are loads of brands we know and love now but I'm excited about the new stuff they're going to bring that yeah. we don't even know exists yet that is so true and also um when the store is up and running all the things we see and read about you actually can try yeah. first yeah. smell first see if you like it yeah because that whole shopping experience is kind of gone with the online and it's hard with beauty products even know your color your, yeah what yeah. shade you need yeah. so anyway very 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 exciting thank you ladies all right next is our second in the get to know it series with karen greenberg this time it's the incredibly cool content creator nuri anna under the quick fire spotlight If not a content creator, what would you be? A biology teacher. Describe yourself in three words. Creative, ambitious, and funny. If you could have a superpower, what would you ask for? Teleportation. Who's your style icon? Rosie Huntington Whiteley. A trend you would like to disappear? Low rise pants. Must have item in your closet. High waisted ivory pants. Must have beauty product. SPF. What's your guilty pleasure? Staying in my pajamas all day. Flat or heels? Heels. Bikini or one piece swimsuit? One piece. Bags or shoes? Bags. What's your hidden talent? I do a really good Shakira impersonation. I'm going to see it after. <laughs> <laughs> a talent you wish you had? I wish I could dance. One thing you had to learn the hard way? Everything, even the bad things, happen for a reason. Favorite Disney princess? Pocahontas. I had a feeling you'd say that. <laughs> what would you name your boat if you had one? Wonderlust. Last supper meal? Lasagna. Your favorite place on earth? Hong Kong. The secret to good style? Less is more. Every woman should invest in? Their basics. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me.
Now, when a book lands on your desk with the title, Permission to be Fucking Happy, you take notice. Well, Georgia did it anyway. Sarah Miller's debut book is a self-help guide on how to curate a happy life, something we can all benefit from. Sarah, welcome, first of all. <laughs> Thank I you. I mean, what a title. Great, <laughs> loved it. That really grabbed your attention. Tell us a little bit about you and why you were drawn and led to write this book. Well, it's a bit of a weird one. So I was thinking about it in the car on the way, thinking, how did I end up writing it? But it's a bit about the whole premise of the book is about following your intuition. And really, your intuition is kind of your spirit. And it really was my spirit that wrote it, because sometimes when I think about it, I just don't know what's in the book. I had to reread it again. And I think it's a, it's a journey that I went on from seven years of being post-divorce and still being quite unhappy and all of the learnings that I took on the way and everything that I had to implement because I kind of lost my entire infrastructure of my life, which is a brilliant place to start if you're going to start back again, like blow the ship on your life. <laughs> right. So when you're at rock bottom, there is only one place to go. Well, you think that there is. Oh. <laughs> I think that when I hit rock bottom, I kind of, I hit a rock bottom and then there were several more below that, which kind of helped in a way because it made me really dig deeper and deeper and deeper and be much more introspective about who I was and what I wanted from life and what the point was. And I think that's the thing that we don't really ask ourselves. We get kind of caught on this hamster wheel, particularly midlife women. We've been on this hamster wheel of going through the motions of what life is supposed to be about. And then suddenly you get somewhere and you don't know if that's the place you wanted to be anymore. And when I lost everything, when I got divorced, I walked away from a beautiful lifestyle, but I was unhappy and I was left with absolutely nothing. I couldn't relate to where I was at. I lost kind of everything about me, all the kind of materialistic aspects of my life. And I had to learn to be happy with that. And I found that there was a lot more to it than that, like society's expectations, keeping up with the Joneses, that there's so much. It's such an interwoven puzzle that it's not so easy as just to say, I'm just going to put my life back together. You have to really think about what it is you want from life. And for me, I'm really pleased that I had this wake up call because sometimes I didn't want to wake up in the morning anymore because I didn't understand what the point was because it was so fucking hard. And I guess that's where the book came from. I don't want other people to feel like that. I don't want them to have to go that low in order to rise up again. And also, I don't want to be too worthy and like well being -y and spiritual. I want to be really matter of fact about the way that I spoke about things because there is no crazy science to it. It is just the human being and human spirit and the way that we live should be intuitive and the way we feel, not always thinking, 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 which is what we've been told to do. So, okay, so honestly, okay, the easiest thing to do is just read the book, I was but we say, do have you it here. It explains it much better. Yeah, and you there. explain, no, first of all, if you're, if reading doesn't come naturally and that fitting it in, you fly through this, your chapters are short, your writing is so easy to read, yes. you're, it's conversational. Exactly. You even kind of joke and use a lot of funny wit throughout and it's great. And and you say a lot of what we're all thinking, but no one says it. Yes, like exactly. no one says it. And you really just say it. You lay it all out there. <laughs> yeah. um, who is this book for? I think that this is, it's really for anyone who's a bit lost and who maybe doesn't know where they want to go in life. But really for me, it was about aiming at midlife women who are very overwhelmed with all the roles that we play. We spin so many plates. And I think it's for anyone who wants to have a bit of a um, midlife kind of check-in with themselves, that they are going the right way, that they are happy. And a bit like an HR session when you're working, like, are you going the right way? Are you pleased with this? Are you pleased with that? No one really checks in with us. It's a bit like, it's kind of the antithesis of having a midlife crisis. This is the precursor so you don't need to go into crisis, crisis mode. mode. <laughs> Got it. Um, you, one of the main bits I took away and that really spoke to me because I think this is something most people ignore and I'm very in tune to it too is a lot of people suffer chronic illness mm. and a lot of people think that's down to everything else but sometimes it's your body screaming to you that yeah. things aren't right. What was your experience there? And I think that's the thing. I became like this well-being guru. So before Deliciously Ella even started out, I was 
healing myself through nutrition because I was so chronically ill and the doctors said, there's nothing wrong with you. And I was like, excellent, that's reassuring. Yeah, I just live a life of pain yeah, and suffering. I, just, I feel like I'm dying, but I just, I realized I was just falling to pieces because I wasn't caring for myself. But what I did was I obsessed about what I was eating. So I became so stressed about eating the right things that I then put more stress on myself, which then made me ill again in other ways. And so what I learned from it is that the best tonic for a well-lived life and health is happiness. And happiness is the elixir of life. And we are all biohacking and bypassing doing things that make us happy in our lifestyles because it's hard to face up to that. It's hard to face up to the fact that you hate your job hate your husband maybe, you hate your relationship, you're not happy with yourself. And this book kind of addresses all of those parts and sees them as a whole and creates a desire within you to create change rather than just saying to somebody, oh, this is a bit of motivation, go ahead and do it. It's brave to make any changes in your life. It's brave actually to read this book and go through the exercises. I didn't know what I was doing. And so I wrote a book about how to do it because it was such an absolute shit show. <laughs> When I tried to do it with no direction, no one given me a guide for it. And I think we've been guided all of our lives. I didn't know where to go from that. And so I think the thing about the book is it's really is about creating that infrastructure and the environment so happiness will thrive because I just did what other people told me to do. Or oh, you must do this, you must do that. They were the wrong things to do. Mm -hmm. Happiness is bespoke to every single person, but the environment for creating happiness and therefore health is the same for everybody. And this is what the book is about. It's not a quick fix, it's not an answer, but it's a roadmap that you can then instill in your own life to get through the things because, yeah, it was friggin' hard, but without those challenges, I wouldn't be doing anything that I'm doing now. Like I look back at who I was, I was just, I was a mouse compared to who I am now. And it's frightening and it seems a bit crazy, but I would not stop doing it now that I've started. Like you create a person that you can't then come back from. So actually, when you say, if I'd have known how hard it was, you probably would have still done it because look where you are now. Exactly. What are your kind of top tips or practical things that you do to live a happy life other than pulling the carp out and starting again. Because <laughs> um, also for everyone, that might not be it. Your life. No, absolutely yeah. not. And I would not recommend <laughs> yeah. that as a first route. But I guess the thing is, the exercises in the book are the best place to start because they ask you questions about what makes you happy. And quite often, we wouldn't know what makes us happy anymore because we just do what we're told. And so I think my top tips for happiness are start writing a list of things that make you happy and then start from as small as a hot cup of coffee oh my goodness in the yes. fresh air to being in the, the sunshine world. like yeah. i'm complete tanorexic i like oh, having a tan so oh accept like it people. accept it yeah um yeah and accept um who you are that person so i like being tanned and i like being on the beach so i used to be like oh god you're so shallow sarah yeah. but <laughs> Why? Who cares? Yeah. You know, I love it. I love that. And so the second thing is don't judge yourself for the things that you love because they make you you. Yes. And the third thing is don't fucking wait until next week to do it. Start doing it immediately. Like I want to book tennis lessons. I love how you're just dropping <laughs> S-bombs. To be fair, because of the book title, we can. This is a very unique segment that I'm enjoying. But yeah, it's liberating. <laughs> also, like stop watching yourself all the time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, as you were. <laughs> right, get on the beach. Yeah, I'm doing yeah, it all. Yeah, sorry, just get a tan, go yeah. to the beach and fuck everyone else. Sorry. No, but it's true. Like, just, yeah. li you're number one. And it's not selfish because no, I guess exactly. you're being a better human to everyone if you're happy. And that's the thing is my whole ethos on life is to live by example. So I don't want to tell people what to do if I'm not going to do it myself. And for my children, I've got two girls. The way I le live is to lead by example. And so I will lead a life where I pursue my passions and I do the things that make me happiest so to allow them to be able to do that because that is what life's about. And as soon as you do it, somebody else doesn't. And everybody else starts doing things that make them happy because they've got permission to be fucking happy. And that's what the book is all about. Yes. Oh, Sarah, you are a dream. Thank you so much. Completely mind-blowing. <sighs> Next up, it's a bit of Georgie. He tagged along when she went to meet the founder of an incredibly exciting jewellery brand, uh, a Lux & Co client that's set to disrupt the diamond market with its new collection. 
we are on our way to meet the diamond store who came to Lux and Co wanting us to help them come up with a name for their coloured lab diamond collection. Also to come up with an ambassador and create a campaign to support the launch. And they are also now working with Shilux to promote the launch. And I'm off today to hear a little bit more about their journey into lab diamonds, about what makes them such a no-brainer and to see some of the collection I haven't already seen. The thing I love the most about my job is connecting our readers with great products and this is such an exciting collection to have worked on. We've been working for months to get this right. Um, it's an amazing product and it's a brand new concept and we can't wait to bring it to market with your help. We've loved being part of the journey and uh, the Diamond Store has been around a long time. When did it begin? And We established the company in 1956. It was a wow. family run business for many years with my dad starting and I'm learning from him and eventually about 15 years ago I partnered with a friend of mine who was into digital marketing at the time and slowly we were successful um, and 15 years later we're here. You're really about sort of affordable luxury aren't you and your, your prices are for diamonds and for gold. Not only good price but also fantastic uh, quality mm. and craftsmanship. Mm. Um, so Lab, t can, you, can you, I remember you saying um, that you discovered Lab at a jewellery trade show. Yeah, it was around uh, 2019. I'd heard a lot about lab-grown uh, diamonds, so I decided to, um, to travel to a jewellery exhibition to understand more and ask the people who were creating it and growing it um, a few questions because I didn't understand what the catch was. You told me a story about somebody threw lab-grown diamonds in the bin and you said to the guy who was presenting them, tell me why they shouldn't be in the bin. And then you went off and you discovered and you were like, hang on a minute, this is a no-brainer. Is that, that's what happened? For sure. I came back with some samples and I brought it to the, the, the stock controller and I said, this is the future. And he said to me, that's not the future and threw it in <laughs> <Okay. the bin. laughs> And I said, if you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. And the rest is history. Yeah, I mean, I'm so on board. And yeah, weirdly, and when, when we first met, you came to Lux & Co and said, um, we want to find an ambassador, we want to name this collection, we want to come up with an amazing campaign to support this incredible collection. I remember that clearly, I said, Georgie, help me, <laughs> okay? Well, it's an amazing name, it's called... The Alara Collection. I think Alara is, um, is a moon that orbits Jupiter and means... Newly discovered. Newly discovered. Like lab grown diamonds. Newly discovered like lab grown diamonds. Yeah. We also... Um, came up with Lucy Watson as the ambassador of the collection. She is beautiful and she stands for sustainability and she's the perfect person to launch our collection. Before we look at some of the collection, and there are some pieces here I haven't seen before, so I'm really excited. You told me a story about how lab-grown diamonds are mined and you said there's a tiny, almost like the size of a microchip taken from a mined diamond. That's right. That is. Yeah, they call it the seed. They put a very thin slice of a natural diamond and they imitate Mother Nature by extreme pressure and extreme heat. They introduce some carbon and it rains down and it just forms and bonds to the natural diamond and it grows. So it's quite a natural process, it is. actually. It is. It's an amazing process. And I think as well what's really interesting is the saving on lab versus mind. So I believe everyone wants to be more sustainable. They want to be more uh, ethically conscious. However, they don't want to pay a premium for that. Mm. And here it's perfect because you're actually saving money mm. and saving the planet. Jeremy, I think we've really got to have a look at the collection. I'm excited to show it to you. I'm excited. I know there's some stuff over here that I haven't seen yet. I mean, I'm thrilled. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, it's been wonderful. I'm off. Um, oh my goodness, I don't know where to look. So we've got... Um, in the collection, we've got earrings. God, those are beautiful. <gasps> Look at those. Wow. We have a range of styles. We have earrings and necklaces and rings as well, from the simple to 
the, the ones really with the halo diamonds around them. And it's a double halo. I love double halo. a double halo. I yeah. always think that's a very clever way of making a... I think um, British people are very reserved and conservative and they need to be a little bit more flamboyant with their jewellery. Oh, I love it on a pinky. <laughs> that is amazing. And try stacking them as well. Yeah, I will try. Totally worry. We've got necklaces, earrings and rings. Um, can you, roughly, what do they start so at? So the collection starts at around £1,500 for a necklace. Uh, the rings start at about um, just under £2,000 and they go up to £4,500. Oh. oh my goodness. I mean, but you need 23. <laughs> Really oh, nice. That is so, absolutely amazing. Yeah. And I actually love it with my other jewellery. It really fits in. Yeah. I've got to have a look at these yellow gold earrings. Wow. Those are fabulous. And then necklace wise, that is a, what is that? That's an emerald cut. That's an emerald cut yellow diamond oh. with a diamond halo. Wow, that is so beautiful. You know, I can really see that layered and looking really For sure. beautiful. Gosh. That is stunning. Georgie, I've got one more thing to show you. Okay. Are you going to propose? I'm married, Jeremy, so are you. <laughs> ah! Oh my god! So we custom designed a box to have. Is that for me? A light to oh spotlight. Oh my goodness! And it's just your size, just your <laughs> colour. I already predicted it. But the yellow diamond. My husband's watching, it's been wonderful, but I'm now, I'm now got the yellow diamond in my life. Oh my goodness, I haven't seen this. What's, oh my god, I mean, it is absolutely stunning. That's called the Anastasia ring, um, and it's a, it's a very popular ring because it's a beautiful vintage looking ring, but with all the diamond sparkle. I mean, can you imagine being proposed to with that? It's a yes, yes, yes. That one starts at 2200 and goes up to £4,500, depending on the size of the stone. And this is the biggest? That's the biggest. So that, you're looking about four and a half grand. Yes. If that was a mined diamond, mm -hmm. what would we be looking at roughly? I would say 50000 plus. <laughs> Whether that was an engagement ring or a cocktail ring, you would make somebody very, very happy with one of those. God, amazing. Jeremy, thank you so much. You're welcome. I think it's just going to be a massive success. Can't wait. It's really <laughs> cool. Wow. It is just such a no-brainer, as Georgie would say. How insane was that ring? Unreal. Oy! Oh, my God, amazing. And also the beautiful colours they can yeah. get. I guess it's just... It is the future, really, yeah, isn't it? Really it? Is it's future. the price as well, it's, isn't yes. it? Like the price difference, and it still looks absolutely incredible, and it's not mine. Like, yeah. yeah, I know. It's almost like, why wouldn't? You? Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. are you buying the other ones? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Georgie, you got there first. You've introduced us something super exciting there. All right, don't worry. We do have a bit more behind the scenes to come. Charlotte has vlogged a pretty epic day that she had last week. Take a look. <laughs> Charlotte here. So I have just checked into uh, an amazing suite at the Corinthia Hotel in London because I'm here for an event to launch the amazing Dr. Barbara Sturm's new sleep range. So I'm gonna give you a little room tour. Okay. So you walk in here. I wish I could stay here for about a month. I wonder if my husband will notice if I don't come home. Um, there's a little study space here and I think the whole idea is that there's like a kind of scavenger hunt of steps to help you get a good night's sleep. Step one, enjoy a cup of Dr. Sturm's skin tea molecular herbal infusions. We all need a bit of that. Step two, take two capsules of Dr. Sturm's good night supplements. This is the bedroom. It's absolutely stunning. I obviously have eyed up my arrival goodies. Before anything else, I mean, look at this spread. Is it sad to pop champagne by yourself? I think probably not, it's been quite a hard week. Oh my God, okay, look at the view <gasps> from my room. This is insane. Look at that. Okay, what else have we got step-wise in the room? Over here, listen to sleeping sounds. Oh, I love that, there's a playlist. If you know me, you'll know I love a pajama set. I mean, it actually does not get better than 
fresh Asino PJs. What a treat! And then I spy also over here on the bed a new Asino eye mask as well. Finally, the bathroom. Wowie. Gosh, thank you, Thoughts Barbara Sam. For those who don't know, what a boring thing to focus on, but the lip balm is absolutely next level. I finished my last one of those. So happy days, night serum. Also, I need one of these. I always get product in my hair. Okay, wow, that is a serious setup. What are you? Balancing scalp serum. Heaven. Cheers. It's a Victoria sponge. Oh my god, that's so good. I've just unwrapped the Asino. It's a dusty rose pink. I don't have a dusty rose pink. Okay, I thought I'd, before I get ready, do a quick what I packed for overnight. So this is my overnight bag. It is La Double J. It's enormous and very heavy, and as I left the office, Georgie said it like I was going on my gap here, which was entirely justified. I really need a good overnight bag. Anyway, here we are. So, a little evening bag for this evening. Bare flats because I travelled in uh, boots and so just in case I wanted to kind of pad around. It's a bit of a running joke in the Shitlux office that I have a lifetime supply of these Suzanne pouches but they are the best things ever for travelling. So this is, uh, this is my charger, this is my phone charger and my laptop charger. This is spare makeup. This is underwear. And this is toiletries. But like, have you ever seen a more gorgeous little collection? of overnight things, I think not. Uh, what else, all right, straighteners have come with because when my hair is kind of wavy like this, sadly it doesn't seem to hold overnight. I brought with this if only if night dress for my sleepover because you can't come to a sleepover at a lovely hotel without some gorgeous nightwear. So I'm gonna hang these up, I've got a dress, I've got ha ha and a Cino pajama suit, I've got a blazer, I've got ugh, some Manolos, can't go wrong. Quite hard when you don't know the vibe. This is a pink dress from a brand called Le Reverie, Le Reverie, uh, which I actually only wore once. It was a panic buy for a friend's wedding, but I felt like that with the navy blazer and the navy heels could kind of be a vibe. So that's an option. And then, I mean, realistically, I'm probably gonna end up in the Asino pajamas, aren't I? But that's one Asino pajama set. It was a collab with Alexandria Co., um, who's an artist who does all these cool line drawings. And then, my trusty Isabel Moron navy blazer. I am ready to go. Uh, the pink dress did not win. Good morning. I didn't do a very good job of vlogging at dinner last night. It was it was very dark and um, pretty intimate. So this uh, this old camera didn't quite make the cut, um, but it was really lovely. The whole uh, event is to promote the new anti-inflammatory uh, night products. So uh, it was a very healthy dinner full of uh, anti-inflammatory food. Um, so I've woken up, I've gotten ready, I'm gonna do some work in the room. I'm going to have a little bit of breakfast. I'm gonna have a sneak peek at the spa because the Corinthia spa is pretty special. And then heading on to lunch. I've got a lovely lunch. I mean, this is, I'm actually almost loath to tell you. Lunch is at um, the Connaught this afternoon. Um, most weeks don't look like this, but uh, it's a special lunch with various members of press um, just to kind of check in with one another. Do you want to say hello? hello? <laughs> Thank you. Hello. This is the fabulous lunch. Thank you so much. So Perfect. She was Lovely, thank you so much. The egg toast with caviar. Mm -hmm. So the egg is uh, cooked whole in a water bath at 1.49 Fahrenheit for an hour, an hour and a half to two hours. Then we remove the yolk, it has a texture of most of the cheese, mm. feta cheese. We can two brioche, saute it, and then the caviar on top. Amazing, thank you so much. Look at that. <laughs> I have just jumped in a cab 
on my way home, I think it's time to go and do some work now. So thank you so much for joining me on a very fun 24 hours and see you soon. Charlotte, I mean, these are some great segments we have today. What do you think, Dr. Barbara Sturm? Any opinions on that? Yeah, as a brand? I want to raid her. <laughs> yeah. Stash looks unbelievable. I mean, what a day, lucky girl. What lucky a day. Girl. I'm just the whole place looked amazing. Oh, I didn't know it? that. From start to finish. Great 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried Dr. Barbara Sturm? I haven't, but I'm just more excited and envious of like, yeah, being at the Connell and yeah. <laughs> being at the Corinthia. Looks Charlotte, amazing. if you need anyone to take over next time, we are all <laughs> yeah. available. All right, that is it for today. Thank you so much to Georgina, Heather, Laura, and of course, Alice, Karen, Nuri, Georgie, and Charlotte. We are back next Monday with a gold special. Joe Good is in the host seat, joined by a fabulous array of stylish ladies to discuss fashion, beauty, and everything else later in life. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up, and do subscribe if you haven't yet. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Goodbye.